This is the ADC AK557280 converter. In this video we're gonna briefly go through what it is, what it does, how to use it and how to connect it to other ports. This is version 2.4. I made a video of the version 1.1 four and a half years ago so there's been quite a few revisions and changes in between. This is AD converter so it converts analog signal coming to the XLR or you could have RCA inputs as well to a digital I2S or DSD outputs which are provided here with the UFL connectors. These days almost all processing is digital so ADC is needed somewhere in the system. Mostly it's in the recording so in hi-fi we usually don't need ADCs unless you want to process analog source such as record player. The output data and clocks are provided via UFL connectors because of a lot better signal integrity and clock quality compared to pin headers. You can use I2S or DSD format. I2S you can select master or slave, DSD is always master. To make this board to do anything you need at least master clock and power supply. You need at least supplies for the op-amp stages which is something like plus minus 12 to plus minus 15 volts then you need 5 volts for digital and there's an optional 6 volts or it can be a bit higher to supply the analog references separately. For easy power supply connection, if you use one of our power supplies like this one for all, you can just connect all the supplies with the Micromolex 6 pin cable. There are two configuration options for this board. Hardware where you configure everything with just jumper links here or I2C where you need a microcontroller or a similar host. If you use this as a I2S slave it's as plug and play as a board like this can be because all the clocks are automatically configured. If you use this as a master then you need to configure the clocks with the jumper links or with the I2C. If we look at the jumper links configurations we have the DSD selection then you can select the data mode then we have the clocking selection if you use the master mode, the master slave selection and then there's a set of digital filters the same way as you have the oversampling filters in DAX and there's also a digital high pass filter. There is some DC offset in this coming from the input circuit and from the ADC chip itself and you can just remove it by using a, a digital high pass filter. This is a stereo board but you can also get this board as mono these connectors are actually not soldered so I can just take it off. It looks like this and if you use this mono you get 3 dB dynamic range improvement because the input channels are summed together. We also have two LEDs. There's one for power and one to indicate the clipping of the ADC and you can also wire the clipping LED to the front panel. If we look at the layout on high level so we have the, the input buffers here, the first stage high impedance input buffer, then we have fully differential amplifier stage with some filtering and setting the DC bias for the ADC which is here, then there's some reference generators and on this side we have the jumper link, the hardware control, there's a clock buffer driving the outputs and then we have just some simple filtering and protection for the power supplies. In terms of the components, we have LM4562 input buffers, OPA1632 fully differential amplifiers, the ADC is the AK5572, then we have LD3042 LDO, and there are some NE5532 for the references. And the passives here are thin film resistors and COG capacitors. Nothing exotic, but just good quality basic components. That also reflects my design philosophy. I don't really use exotic components, just good quality basic parts. If you want SPDIF output from the ADC, you can use our SPDIF TX part. To use this, you need the optional oscillator circuit populated, which is not included on this part. Then you connect the clocks between the two ports. You can run either master or slave. It won't make a difference in performance. 
that's one of the reasons why the ADC has the clock buffers. So even driving clocks out of the ADC shouldn't cause any interference in the ADC chip itself. For a complete system example, we'll be using the mini DSP MC8 streamer port to connect the ADC to PC via this port. I have actually two of these here. One is the this is the light version and this is the original MC8 streamer. There's very little difference between the ports and both work in this example. I2S is a generic format, so any USB module that takes recording should work with the ADC, but just make sure that they do have the recording path because most of the USB modules are only playback. To provide easy connectivity, we're going to be using our MCA Streamer Buffer 2 port. So we plug this port on the MCA Streamer provides a neat clock interface with the UFL connectors. It takes power from the MC8 streamer. To connect the ports, we have four UFL cables, one six pin power cable, and then we have one, one for all power supplies. So for ADC, we don't need all the clocks. One of them is for DSD only. So, but it's always four we need for connections. So there's the master clock, bit clock, work clock, and data. In this one we have four channel data in and out, and then we have two sets of clocks. So you can you can connect two converters without any extra clock buffers. This is the data. So it's data one two in. Word clock, bit clock, and master clock. The MC8 streamer is I2S master, like it's usually the case with USB interfaces. So all the clocks are coming out of here to the ADC, which is in slave mode. So we don't need to do any of the configuration, we just run it as is as plug and play as possible. And then we connect the power supply with one six pin cable. And then just connect the USBs to the MC8 streamer and to the power supply. And the final thing is to connect the ADC to my DIY signal generator, which is just using the my W duck. Okay, that's all connected and ready to power up. And here we have Verdun's multi-instrument open on Windows PC. This is one of the many options you can use to analyze or kind of data capture, including audio. So we have ADC in DAC devices here. Now the DAC is my DAC and the ADC is using the mini DSP ACO driver, which is connected to the MCH streamer. So we've put the analyzer on, we have just noise now, the tone on, and we have a nice 997 hertz tone there. The FFT is clean, you have harmonics around minus 120 dB. There's no ground loops here either, which is quite common. I am actually powering the one for all power supply from a USB power bank. So that helps with the ground loops. So this is just a quick example to show that everything works. That's all for now. If you would like to see a schematic walkthrough or details of the layout or any other technical details of the ADC, please leave a comment below. Bye now.